Hi, it's Nate from Phoenix Project Management again, with the second of our videos discussing basic scheduling techniques in Phoenix. In the last video, I discussed relationships and lags, and now I'd like to discuss the different types of activities. There are four basic activity types in Phoenix. Tasks, which you are already familiar with, hammocks, which are a type of summary activity, and then milestones and flags, which are further subdivided into start and finish types. Let's start with hammocks. A hammock is a special type of activity without a fixed date or duration. Its dates and durations are determined by the predecessor activities that are related to its start and finish. A hammock will have as its start date the earliest start allowed by all predecessors that are linked to the hammock's start, and a hammock will have as its finish date the latest finish required by any predecessor linked to the finish of that hammock. As an example, let's create a new hammock and use it to create a summary of the construction activities in this schedule. First, we'll create a new activity and then fill in some details. Then, change the activity type to hammock and click enter. Now, we'll want to link from the start of the first activity, number 20, to the start of our hammock. We'll also link from the finish of the last activity, which is number 190, to the finish of our hammock. Then we'll hit schedule and you'll see the hammock now stretches from the start of our construction activities to their finish with a total duration of 115 days. Hammocks allow you to create a summary of a tightly linked sequence of activities, giving you some duration and start and finish of the group at a glance. You can also link multiple activities into one hammock, which can be useful if you are creating a summary of multiple work paths, like the one in the schedule, and you want to ensure that a delay in either path will be reflected in the summary. For instance, if the duration of activity 85 increases by a few days, we want the summary to reflect this. So in this case, because activity 87 is the end of that path of work, we'll just link from the finish of 87 into the finish of the hammock and reschedule. As a final note about hammocks, hammocks may not be the predecessor to any other activity in a relationship. To put this another way, hammocks may not have successors because they represent summaries of multiple activities rather than work to be performed in the schedule. Next, let's talk about milestones. Milestones are a special type of activity that represents just the start or finish of an event, rather than the process required to complete it. Milestones are most often used to identify completion of a major component of a project or the start or finish of some external process, such as permitting or a notice to proceed, where only the start or completion of the event is relevant to the project schedule. Thus, milestones have only a start or finish date depending on if they are a start or finish milestone. Importantly, this means milestones may only have relationships that link to or from the existing date of the milestone. You can never link an activity to the start of a finish milestone or link from the finish of a start milestone to another activity. As an example, let's create a milestone for roof dry-in for this schedule, which will identify the finish of roofing activities. First, we'll create a new activity and give it an appropriate name and change its type to finish milestone. Now, we can link from the finish of activity 70 to the finish of our new milestone. If you drag and drop the relationship, Phoenix will automatically assign the appropriate relationship type for the milestone. We can also create relationships from the milestone to other activities. For instance, the rough-in activities are really dependent upon roof dry-in, not completion of any particular roof activity. So we'll delete the existing relationship to activity 70 and then create a new relationship, from the finish of the dry-in milestone to the start of the rough-in activities. You'll notice this schedule also has a start milestone, which identifies the delivery of the building permit. Start milestones behave the same as finish milestones, except they have only a start date, and may only be linked start to start, or rarely, start to finish with other activities. Flags are the last type of activity which you will find in a Phoenix schedule. Flags behave very similarly to milestones, in that they have only a start or finish date, which restricts how other activities may link to them. The primary difference is that, like hammocks, flags are intended to be informational only, and not part of the schedule logic. For this reason, flags may not have successor activities, only predecessors. Flags allow you to create informational activities, which identify the completion or beginning of important events that nevertheless do not affect the scheduling of other activities. For instance, you may want to flag things like public events or site visits that shouldn't affect the scheduling of work but are important for those on the project to be aware of. That completes our review of the different activity types in Phoenix Project Manager. 
I hope this video has helped you understand more about the basics of scheduling in Phoenix, and if you have any questions or would like to download a trial version of the software, please visit www.phoenixcpm.com.